The Bible Treasury. A monthly magazine of papers on scriptural subjects. Volume 20, Article 31. Series 4. Number 8. 1894 and 1895. Gospel Words. 8 The Daughter of Jairus Raised. Matthew 9, Mark 5, Luke 8. A great request was now laid at the feet of Jesus. The petitioner was Jairus ruler of the synagogue. His daughter, a maiden of twelve years, was dying. But come, said her father, lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Nor did our meek master turn a deaf ear, but arose and followed him. The dying maiden was a striking type of the daughter of Zion, for whose sake Messiah was here and the Jewish ruler expressed his faith in engaging his gracious presence and power to restore his daughter at the last gasp. On the way, the woman with a bloody flux for twelve years touched his garment and was healed. And the Lord not only yielded to her deed, but drew her out from her hiding, and sealed her faith and confession with his open approval to her better blessing. It is not otherwise with the Lord now, as we have proved who have gone to him in out depth of need in this interval since he came as Messiah to be sought by Israel, and before he reaches the daughter of his people, not sick only but dead. Grace has met us to the uttermost, not merely immediate healing for such as have touched him on his way, but clearance away of all fear and doubt that we might taste how gracious he is and rest in peace through his word. Yet this created a delay which must have tried most severely the importunate Jairus. And while the Lord was yet speaking to the healed woman, one comes from the ruler's house saying, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the teacher. But an answer was given to nourish his drooping faith, Fear not, only believe, and she shall be made well. So it will be in the day that hastens. Unbelief will do its deadly work among the mass of the Jews. But the desperate condition of the chosen people will draw down the action of grace, and faith will, according to God's word, look to him that loves to heal, and to him, that smote to bind up, and he will in due time raise them up and cause them to live before him. Whether it be the long and desperately tried woman or the maid of Israel, faith alone enjoys the blessing. And justly so, for faith renounces all dependence on self and honors God and his Son, giving credit for love as great as the power, and Christ's word as unfailing as either. Faith therefore, purifies the heart, as well as relieves and assures it. Here the Lord, when come to the house, suffered none to enter save chosen witnesses, Peter, James, and John, with the father and mother of the maiden, as for all the rest who were weeping and bewailing, he put them out when they derided his saying, Weep not, she is not dead but sleepeth. They believed their senses, not his word, and the scornful shall not see the blessing. But he took hold of her hand and called, saying, Maiden, arise. Then her spirit returned, for it was gone, and she rose up immediately, and he directed food to be given her. So in due time will the same Lord raise up the people from the valley of dry bones, as the prophets assure us, no matter how many say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, we are clean cut off. As Jehovah hath spoken, he will perform and in that day shall it be known through all the earth. Quickening was no strain on the Lord of glory. It belonged to the Son as to the Father, and now that the Son was here a man to do his will, the Father gave him to have life in himself, showing him all things that himself doeth. Of these none was more characteristic than awakening the dead and quickening them. His dignified calm is remarkable here as on all such occasions. He took the dead child by the hand and called, and she arose immediately. He graciously thought of her bodily need, which at such a moment even parents might not unnaturally overlook. Truly he hath done all things well, and as none other, though many another did like works or even greater in his name, which exalts him as much or more than if he had done them all himself. And has this tale of the Holy Spirit no bearing on you who read these lines, dead to God while you live? Nay, it was written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life in his name, John 20 verse 31. How many have heard his voice, since he was here, in the written word? For the hour now is, 
John 5 verse 25, as the Lord so solemnly avers, that souls hearing him may not come into judgment but pass out of death into life. Leave not such an issue uncertain. You might well despair if it turned on you, as men fancy in the pride and impenitence of their hearts. But the life you need is holy and solely in the Son of God, and God is calling you to believe that Jesus is He and that He gives eternal life to every believer on Him through His Word. It is the dead who are now called to hear, and they that hear, the Savior assures us, shall live. Clearly, they are not dead physically, but in trespasses and sins, and they are called to hear Him and live. For fife is not in the first man whether profane or religious, it is in the second, and faith by grace receives it. For such a boon, morality is as vain as ordinances. Those that live do live to God and honor His institutions, but believers guided by God's Word and Spirit testify to Christ as their life and reject every other dependence as a destructive error and a cheat. He is the way, the truth, and the life, as He Himself declared, and so it is in John 5 with His verily, verily. Woe is his who despises him or sets up a rival in his stead. Whosoever denyeth the Son hath not the Father, he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. It is far better than to be raised to natural life as Jairus' daughter was, though he who raised her is the same who quickens those who believe now, and Israel from the dust of death by and by. Fear not, only believe.